What's up, everybody? This is the Till Next Time podcast. I am one of your hosts, AJ Spade. And it's me, Rebecca. And this is our first episode of the Till Next Time podcast, where we're mostly going to be talking conspiracy theory type issues <laughs> um maybe some uh creepy pasta type stuff it's gonna be a variety it's a variety podcast we're gonna keep it light but informative so you can learn laugh and and enjoy our two faces because you'll be seeing them a lot isn't that right rebecca well that was crazy <laughs> Those what? are crazy eyes from my girl. Crazy eyes. No, 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 no. I don't do those. So, um, we're just going to start jumping into our topics and start discussing them. All right. So, uh, what's your topic then, AJ? Um, my first topic is a weird one. Um, it's the hollow earth is filled with giants, Germans, and a little sun. Hold up, wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, (laughs) according to this article, the earth is hollow. So inside of the hollow earth, there are giants. For some reason, there are Germans. (laughs) And there's a little sun. So there's another sun inside of our planet. And I'm going to, I'm going to read what this says and then we'll say something about it. Uh, People have believed that there is another world lying just beneath the surface of our planet to a number of cultures, the ancient Greeks for one, it is a dark place filled with the souls of the dead. So basically they're saying it's hell. The underworld type concept. Um, yeah. But most of these early beliefs were metaphoric or mythological in origin. Modern science holds that the Earth is an unbroken series of layers, crust, liquid magma surrounding a dense hot core made primarily of iron and nickel. But not everyone is convinced. In the 17th century, some of the lead scientists' minds of the time came up with a new theory that the planet is actually hollow. This has proved incredibly durable. Even today, there's a small group of hollow earth believers who are fighting violently. I cannot say that word. (laughs) Their ideas through books, websites, meetings, and some extremely ambitious travel plans. Now get to the point where there's giants. Um, Okay, so the first group believes that the earth in the middle has hell in there. And then the other group believes that it's just the earth's crust. So it's just normal. And then this group believes that there are giant Germans. Okay, the guy who, you know, Haley's Comet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guy it's named after is the one who came up with this theory that the the earth is hollow and that there are giants in the earth. So this really smart guy. Um, I click that way too fast. Um, Haley's strange idea was expanded upon over the next few centuries, tossing out the messy view of multiple spheres for a much funner vision that the entire interior of the earth is just one impossibly large cavern. Generally, this new view of the hollow earth is accompanied with the theory of a small sun that hangs in the very center, creating a lush, 
livable environment on the flip side of the Earth's surface. According to a number of hollow Earth websites, this vision was developed among famous mathematicians and scientists, such as some dude whose name I can't pronounce in the 18th century. <laughs> so basically, there's a, they think there's an Earth inside of our Earth. What do you think about that? I mean, it's not an uncommon thing. I know that they've gotten those movies and stuff like that where it's like Journey to the Center of the Universe and all that. And they believe that there's dinosaurs. And I just am very amused because it sounds, at least from the way that this has been written, that the group is kind of just holding out on the fact that they had some dudes back in the 1800s say, yeah, the uh, earth is hollow and there's people in there. And like, they got lush green forest and shit. And it's dope. Because like, I don't know. I feel like someone from the 1800s telling me to put arsenic on my face to make my skin look better. I might be a little bit like, no. You may have been smart in the 1800s, but no. So, I don't know. Okay, so you got people in the 1800s saying that the Earth is hollow and there's giant Germans. I'm going to keep saying giant Germans because that just sounds, that's a funny visual. (laughs) I imagine like giant people, but they're still really short (laughs) because they're German. (laughs) So, wait. What? I was going to say, so, two things, actually. How deep do you think the, the crust is before you reach the other side? And then is it going to be like Portal, where like you jump through, and then suddenly gravity changes, and you fall again? And then also, does this place have bodies of water? Does it have tides? If See, there's only a sun, but no moon, how, how do the tides work? Is it linked to the outside moon? That's a great bunch of questions. (laughs) But, okay, according to this article, um, the South Pole and the North Pole would be the entrances into the center of the Earth. So there's, like, I guess a portal on the South Pole and the North Pole that you would go through. Or maybe an elevator, freight freight train, maybe. (laughs) It depends on the person, you know what I mean? Yeah, you like have you to, see the version of it that the center of the Earth gods you put decided your hand, to. You put your hand on the North Pole and it, it reads your body, and then you appear wherever your mind takes you. That would actually be really cool. <laughs> but um, when you talk about oceans and stuff, that that's another one of our subjects today. So that might I don't know if that'll help answer that question, but maybe they. I, I'm thinking they're saying that they think there's an Earth inside of Earth. So everything that's out here would be in there. I don't know how that would work with, like, the sky. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Hold up. I remember growing up reading a manga called Descendants of Darkness. And in this manga, basically, they had dead spirits, uh who worked for the Ministry of Death or something like that, and they would come and collect the souls and take them to the afterlife. So, like, but the way that, the whole reason I bring this up is because their whole world is centered on the underside, so, like, in reflections of ponds and stuff like that, that's where you see them. Mm -hmm. So, like, I kind of see what you're saying, where, like, everything that's above the surface here is below the surface there. Yeah. It's like a flip-flop. So it's like a mirror world. Mirror it's the world. upside down. It's, upside down. <laughs> it's not nearly as scary as the Stranger Things would like that, to be. It actually looks better than our world. <laughs> <laughs> well, we but, haven't gone there yet with our uh, global warming. How does global warming impact the center of the world? Is that just like untouched? It's like, fuck you, that's your problem. Yeah, that's, here. that's our problem. That it doesn't affect <laughs> their magical world with leprechauns and giant Germans. Wait, there's leprechauns now too? I, I, I just threw leprechauns in there. Why not? There's unicorns and everything. That's where that's everything cool. is. That's, that's, where, cool. that's where everything <laughs> is. Every mystical creature that we thought was made up and not real 
they're all there. Fun fact, when I was a kid, I thought that dragons were real and that dinosaurs were just a government conspiracy to cover them up. Dragons are real. Well, I know. <laughs> well, but, I know. <laughs> but but. That, that gives you another theory. You have, if people believe that, and then you have the other half of the people who believe that the earth is flat, how would that work? Because if it's flat, then there's no inside of it. <laughs> I've got no words for that. <laughs> Once you say flat earth, people either like deathly agree with the flat earth thing or they just stop talking. <laughs> like, I think not, they probably would just do what I just did and be like, oh, you, you're not one even, of those. Not even going to dive it. into that. <laughs> Mm -mm. We'll we'll find something else to talk about. Okay, forget flat Earth. We're on Hollow Earth. Hollow Dog? Earth is the thing. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. I I wish things like this were true and that we could just prove them because these would be really cool things. That's. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of things that I choose to believe in because it makes the world a better place. To me, at least, yeah. like it's all subjective. Um, but I definitely think that it is fascinating when historical discoveries are made or when things are uncovered that, you know, oh, we didn't realize that this is what this structure was used for however long ago. Or I've been following um, this YouTuber called Ask a Mortician lately, and she goes over a lot of like the facts about ancient cadavers and corpses and things and it's just really cool to learn about the history associated with it too I need to check that out I was supposed to check it out this week I didn't because life happens and things <laughs> life and things yeah life and things but yeah that's stuff. weird though if there's another sun inside the earth they say a little sun but like the regular sun is like extremely hot. So like what would the little sun be made out of? Um that's a good question. I'm gonna say unicorn farts and leprechaun magic. Cause what else I mean, that would just mean if that's true, that would mean that there had to be a star, a little baby star, because the sun is a star. Mm -hmm. So there had to be a little baby star that got surrounded by crust. And while being surrounded by crust, it formed a, a earth inside that crust. Like there's vegetation. And captured water. And Which, captured water. Whoa, okay, but hold up. That's basically saying that the inside of the earth is one of those terrariums that somehow got set up eight bajillion years ago. More than eight bajillion lots of years ago and now it's just this sealed ecosystem that's been maintaining itself all these years have you seen those those are those are cool the big yeah old, the big old with the plants but then if that's the fact then that happened and then somehow all that got surrounded by another ecosystem <laughs> and then that that gives you the question where does water come from aliens because the earth is mostly water so did okay you got little water came in with that star and it got enclosed into crust more okay. water had to come in to cover that crust or how many ever layers of crust there is after that first what crust. if hold up what if the earth started out as water it was a water globule floating in space, having a good old time. And it somehow manages to crash into, this is the most like least scientifically plausible explanation, but I'm, I'm, I'm rolling here. So this water glob globule, giant water globlet floating through space goes and smashes into a baby star. And the baby star is like hot and the water is probably not as hot. So the water like, oh, expands and to not touch the baby it. star. No, 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 to not touch the baby star. So it expands. 
but at the same time there's like meteors and stuff that just land in the water and then they impact with each other in a way that seals the baby star in I can see that happening that would be like the most magical way that earth was formed unicorns I mean, yeah, I can I can definitely see that happening, but to to yeah. think about that makes your brain explode. <laughs> but then the other concept would be the religion aspect where, you oh, know a deity got involved. Maybe this is like what up your is like. God just had a little star and he was like, you know what? I'm gonna put this inside of this and then, boop, there's a little planet. What if that was the first Earth? What if in the Bible at the beginning, when he made Earth, that was it? And then after that, he made another Earth on top of that Earth. But they don't mm-hmm. talk about that part. Sandwich Earth. So the Earth, that's it. Book. Like the, the, the Garden of Eden is inside the Earth. Because that's where the snake is, and the snake is the devil. Boom. You linked it. You Boom. solved it. Figured Boom. it all out. Figured Forget it the out. scientist. I figured it they out. Don't, they don't got shit to say, because you've already solved it. Boom. That's how we do it. First <laughs> subject, I'm going to put a big stamp on there and say proved. There ain't nothing <laughs> for until next time. That, that's done. We're dropping that topic. Next time, there's something else. Boom. Figured it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's our next subject? Since we figured out the first one. Well, on the topic of God, I can talk about death. Oh. You want to hear about death? I mean, if you say it like that, sure. I actually want to talk about something called alkaline hydrolysis, also called resumation. Um, I've heard aquamation as well. Basically, water cremation. Have you ever heard of it? Um, yes, when you told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a fair point. So basically, aquamation, it, sorry, alkaline hydrolysis is where you take the body and you put it in a pressurized tube and you fill it up with you fill the tube up with this mixture of water and sodium hydrox uh, potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So you take this canister, you add really hot water with sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, and it's got this basic pH, so it's got a higher pH when it starts. And then you superheat it, but because it's pressurized, it doesn't boil. And you do this for four to 12 hours, depending on the temperature and the maker model of the machine that you're using to do this with. And what it does is it mimics the natural chemical decomposition process. So you end up with greenish brown tinted liquid that's made up of salts, sugars, peptides, and amino acids. And then the bones, which are easily easily crushed and able to be given to the next of kin to be used just as you would uh, cremation ashes. So it's a form of body disposal that's actually been used since the 90s. It's commonly used with livestock because of the fact that it can neutralize viruses and possibly even prions from some of the studies I've been reading. yeah, so like all this I saw on a video, as I said, by the um, the YouTuber I follow, the Ask a Mortician channel. She mentioned it during one of her videos, and then I just went down this rabbit hole because it was so fascinating. So, like, so they're using it on live, livestock. Has there, how many times have they, like, used it on humans? They've been using it on humans for a while, too. They started using it on uh, medical cadavers and uh, cadavers donated to uh, universities. 
um, I'm trying to remember the exact university, but there are multiple universities that dispose of their cadavers that way, and that is human remains. Um, the Mayo Clinic actually offers free uh, resumation services for people who are or organ donors. So the um, the leftovers from the organ donation get processed through alkaline hydrolysis. And so this has actually been used on human remains for a little while. It's just not super commonly used in the, the death industry specifically. I'm sure it would be very expensive if like you like somebody in your family died and they're like, I want to be water cremated. It's so the expenses are mostly associated with the overhead of getting the actual equipment. Um, because from what I'm seeing, the equipment can be pretty expensive. It can be like $400,000. Um, once the equipment is had though, it actually takes about a quarter of the energy that water, that fire cremation takes. So you're using less energy once you have it. Um, from what I've read of pricing for people, it is up to the funeral home how they want to set their prices and because it is not a common service it is going to be slightly more expensive but i would think that once more people started seeing this as a viable option for themselves it'll increase the demand and hopefully increase the supply because you know more people are picking up on this being an option more people are using it making it more desirable for other funeral homes to offer so, like, your body, does it become, like, a liquid? Kind of. So, all of your soft tissues is what turns into the liquid. It, like, denatures all of the proteins and everything in you. So, there's no actual DNA left over in, in the liquid that comes out. Um, they actually found, based off of the structure of the liquid, that it might be pretty useful as a fertilizer, like, for feeding plants and things like that. So the liquid doesn't have any sort of DNA or anything like that in it. It's not, and then after that you have your bones. So the bones are calcium phosphate at that point. They've basically been leached of all the tissue and everything like that. And they're let to dry out for a little bit. And then once they're dried out, you crush them up and give them to the family as the ashes. So, like, Wolverine wouldn't survive this. Because he needs, he, he needs, like, a speck of DNA to, like, regenerate himself. Yeah, and that's the thing, too, is I wonder how the adamantium would react. Because you bring up a good point. Um, things like, uh, uh, not implants. Like, metal, I guess there, there are some of implants, but, like, medical yeah. implants. Yeah. Um pacemakers things like that uh pacemakers you have to be careful with fire cremation because they can kaboom and cause a lot of issue uh with alkaline hydrolysis it kind of deals with all of that and then on top of that you're not burning mercury or whatever other things that might be present in the body based off of whatever treatments they've received Mm -hmm. Also, I think everybody just saw how big of nerds we were because I used an example of Wolverine and you agreed. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, again, I just, I'm still curious about how the adamantium would work. Yeah. Also, instead of breaking down the bones and give it to the family, this will, it might be a little cruel. Well, it might sound cruel, but I think it sounds cool. You take the liquid. Okay. You take mm -hmm. the liquid, right? And mm -hmm. you put it in a lava lamp and you give that to the family. <laughs> That's the beautiful thing about death practice is if that is how you want to go, you can make a death plan and say, I want my cremated liquid and remains to be sealed in a lava lamp. Yeah, and you can make the I actually the don't know how well that can work. I don't know how well that works. But it would be close to good. But if you make the bones jellified, then you put that inside of your liquid. Marketing. I mean, you can make people into diamonds. You can, there's so many different ways to process a dead body. Like, and I don't mean that in the creepy serial killer 
<laughs> I do want to throw that out. But there are many ways to process a body. Um, people request to be made into diamonds and jewelry. Uh, I've read things about people being cremated and their ashes mixed into paint and even tattoo ink. Um, I've seen, obviously, the aquamation. I've seen the tree pods. Like, my dream is to make, instead of a cemetery of gravestones, make a forest of grave trees. So then you're, like, walking with your damn kid being like, look, kid, that's grandpa tree, that's peepaw over there. You know what I mean? I've never heard of any of this stuff. You've never heard of any? See, that's why I want to talk about it. Because if you've never heard about it, that means that there's probably at least a couple of other people who haven't heard about it. We have I've a lot probably of... only... Huh? We, we have a lot of subjects to cover. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm going to be talking a lot just about op- death. opened up a whole new book. <laughs> All about death. <laughs> wow. But yeah, um, I don't know if I would... There, You just opened up a ton of choices for when someone dies. Like, I, I don't I know. You. Which... Am I here? Oh, you're here now. Okay. You just opened up a bunch of like different things Mm -hmm. of what to do when you die now i don't like i don't want to think about dying but thinking about what i could do with myself afterwards sounds kind of fun yeah so like obviously the topic is not a fun topic it's an interesting one though it is an interesting topic um and yeah i'm trying to find a way to say this but it is something that happens to everybody, right? And you don't necessarily want your loved ones to be in the thick of having to deal with all your affairs and figuring out what to do with your body when they're also dealing with your loss. So kind of having an understanding of death, having an understanding of what your options are and your loved one's options are will help you if slash when something does happen because I mean there really isn't much if it's it's more of a matter of when and hopefully the when is way down the line but being able to say like hey I know of a bunch of options and I personally want to go the most eco-friendly way available so whether that's throwing me in the ground and putting some dirt over me or you have to do some sort of processing for me, then uh, alkaline hydrolysis. So make me into a lava lamp. <laughs> make me into a lava lamp, man. Like, I, I love that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but putting people in the ground, what if you put them in the ground and then they fall into hollow earth? See? That's, that's another proponent for alkaline hydrolysis because if we're burying our people too deep they might fall into the hollow earth and the hollow earth people are gonna be like what's with all these corpses yo what if they can bring them back that would just, i just went into a weird loop in my head <laughs> maybe maybe that's how zombies started because there's obviously some freak shit going down in the center of the earth yeah so what if like all of our dead that we're just pushing through to the other side of the crust are getting reanimated and coming back for revenge because we didn't follow proper body disposal. We didn't make them into lava lamps. Lava we lamps never lava. come back to zombies. Yeah, what the, what the hell is a lava lamp? Well, lava lamps can shatter. But they won't attack you and be zombies. What if? Yeah, no, it won't. <laughs> I mean, don't drink the lava lamp. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, like I think question. people have done weirder things than that oh yeah naturally sure. Sure. <laughs> wow i don't even know what to think now you you giving me trees you can turn people into trees i i'm telling you i really want to set up like i want to buy a property of land somewhere where there's trees so i'm not like completely violating the local ecological setup by being like let's make trees here so get something in the in the tree line area and build up a tree cemetery, man. Like have it so that people can buy plots similar to a regular cemetery, but instead of a coffin, you go in a tree pod and that tree grows and grows and grows and I mean that you would know. make a, that would make a cemetery look way better. Like mm-hmm. instead of just being tombstones in the ground, you can like 
engrave things into the trees. Yeah, or even just have a plaque, like yeah. a plaque near the tree, or depending on how much you want to pay, we could set up a bench near it or a little swing or something like that. But would that make a haunted forest? I hope so. Well, okay, I, I say I hope so only if these spirits that are haunting the forest are there of their own volition and are not there because they're upset about the way that their body has been interred. Because I would very much appreciate if any ghosts are staying, just chilling out in the forest, they're doing it because they really like it there. Yeah. Okay, I just, thought, I just thought of something. Boom. I just thought of it. Boom. My Boom. brain clicked again. Every subject, my brain clicks. There we go. You got your you got your forest with your people bodies in the trees. Okay. Not, just going up there. They're not in the trees. They're not. They're not. No, 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 no. They're they're buried in in the ground, and then the trees are up. You you know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, this this sounds like something that would happen further in the future. So, how about? With every tree, like, okay, somebody knows, like, for people who, like, know they're about to die or something, and they, like, want to leave something for their family, they can record, like, their body and having them say something to their family. And then when you hit a button on the tree, like, a projection pops up of them. And I that's how you can really visit cute. them. Yeah. And I you can visit them. I think really cute. I think... I think instead of putting something in the tree, I think setting that up with the plaque or sign or headstone. Yeah. Um, I think doing that is a really good idea because then you could take the plaque or headstone and have the camera inserted inside of it so that it's kind of protected from the uh, environment and whatever. And then you press the button and then the projector goes, Burr! and then it's like, hi, sweetie, I love you so much. I hope you're having fun being awesome. Yeah. Things are done because they were cool when I died. Yeah. Or they can say something rude because they were a rude person. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would adore that. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. I'd like that. Even, mm -hmm. even like for regular like cemeteries, like you go up to a gravestone, press it, and there's a projection of your loved one. I'm just imagining like some dystopian future, like decades I always, in the future. Always imagine a dystopian future because I hate the way the world is right now. Yeah. I want to go live yeah. in the middle of the earth with leprechauns and giant germans. <laughs> so that's what this really was about. You were you were trying to see if I knew the way to get there. Well, sorry, I yeah. don't. I need to get there. I need I get to there find the with portal. The German giants. Yeah. And it's going to be through liquidating the earth, turning people into lava lamps, and then forcing my way into a hole. I feel like I earned my right to be here by turning people into lava lamps. Yeah. Next, we're going to talk about the ocean under the ocean. Tell me more. That sounds a bit weird, but um, a gigantic freshwater aquifer. That's a new word for me, aquifer. Have you heard that word before? Is it spelled A-Q-U-I-F-E-R? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was about plants. So oh. please, please tell me what it actually means. All right. It's a freshwater aquifer is hiding under the salty Atlantic Ocean, just off the northeastern coast of the United States. <laughs> A new study finds, while the aquifer's exact size is still a mystery, it may be the largest of its kind, taking up a region stretching from at least Massachusetts, Mass why can I say Massachusetts? <laughs> Like, Stretching from at least Massachusetts to southern North Jersey, or nearly 220 miles. Um, the area includes the coastlines of New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. This aquifer may contain about 670 cubic miles of slightly salty water. 
uh, let's keep going. This water, that's not the right computer. <laughs> I clicked the mouse. <laughs> but this water isn't young either. The researchers said they suspect that much of it is from the last ice age. Uh, Wait, so, oh, Go sorry, I, Go ahead. I was just going to say, the water, are you saying there's like a water bubble of ancient water that is less salty than the ocean water, that's mm -hmm. under the ocean water? So like here's ocean water, and then here's ancient ass, less salty water. Yes, kind of. Kind of. I don't know if it's a bubble. Or I don't know if it's like the bottom of the ocean and there's crust and then right underneath that is an entirely different ocean. Did it define what an aquifer was? No, it did not. <laughs> I'm going to look up what an aquifer is. Look up what an aquifer is. I mean, I, I also can do that too, if, yeah. if you would like. But, you know, you're Rebecca. <laughs> What is an aquifer? An aquifer is an underground layer of water bearing perma, perma, perma you should have looked this up instead of me. <laughs> uh, water bearing per, permeable rock, rock fractures and unconsolidated materials. Groundwater can be extracted using a water well. This isn't telling me much. It's water. It's a. It's kind of like a bubble of underwater. It's under. Image. Um, there you go. An image. So it's but like you'll edit it with a better image, but actually makes sense. I want edit to edit it so we're under an aquifer. I wanted to poke your screen so I could uh, focus it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I guess. Uh, way under water like which are underground oh wait no never mind it's right here in the article <laughs> okay most recently in an effort to find fresh water deposits key this i don't know who key is i skipped some parts there's some dude named carrie key who's researching this so key decided to see if tweaking this technology could help him find aquifers, which are underground pools of fresh water. Boom. There you go. There's you our were definition. Right. You were right. It's water was, under the ground. I, I was right, but I said it really stupidly. <laughs> but yeah, it's. You said it in a way that made sense. Underground pools of fresh water. Okay. Cool. So it's underground water. There's water under the ground. Yeah. Layers, more layers. <laughs> so a burrito of Earth. Yeah, the Earth is a burrito, pretty much what it is. Where's the cheese? Mm, on burrito. the moon, on the moon. but that's on top of the burrito. Where was that? You distracted me with burritos. <laughs> I think burritos um, distract a lot of people. Yeah, they do. Uh. Fresh water. Where the heck was that? At? When companies drilling off the coast for oil sometimes hit fresh water instead. So it's where oil would be in the earth. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't clear whether these fresh water deposits were isolated pockets or whether they covered large expanses. So, okay, basically, there's water under everything, even other water. <laughs> and yeah. they're, they're finding small pockets of, of this fresh water. So that means, okay, the ocean's salty, so it's salt water. Underneath some of that, or as far as we know, all of that, is more water that's somehow fresh water. Okay. So that means there could be other animals 
in that water that we've never seen before? Possibly. The thing we would need to consider would be the lifestyles of those animals. So we would need to think about, for example, what do they eat? Uh, a lot of like the fish species and things like that that live in, like crazy deep depths, uh, they have very specified diets and their physiological structure is designed to live in, the, in that area. So if we're thinking of things that live in aquifers, we would need to think of stuff that would be made to live in that sort of environment, like in an underground, I'm assuming, you know, it has to stay sealed because if you break the seal, then you're exposing it to whatever element. And I mean, I guess from what it sounded like, the aquifer, they didn't know how deep it was. So it could be just like this giant bottomless chasm of fresh water, which I mean, it's kind of relieving when you hear about all the fresh water shortages. But, but also, they said they, they broke earth looking for oil and then they mm -hmm. found pockets of it. So it's been, some of it's been exposed to regular earth. Already. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying though is whatever that's used to living in these pockets, right? Whatever's used to living in there is used to living in an environment that doesn't have any sort of exposure to sunlight and air. It sounds like. So then when you do expose it to sunlight and air, how does it react? And how big were these pockets? Was it something where, like, they broke into it and it's this giant chasm type thing? I'm going to use chasm. It's the word of the day, apparently. Um, but, yeah, so are they these giant things that they're drilling into? Or is it, like, this tiny little thing that just happens to have some fresh water and they drill into it and everything in the, in the area is decimated, you know? Mm, I don't know. But a lot of times when they drill for oil, aren't they, like, in the middle of the ocean already? That is true. That is true. So then that makes me wonder, too, about the salination, the saltiness. Mm -hmm. I wonder how the saltiness um, interacts with the freshwater. Like, if it just – and then how does that impact animals and true. creators? But, like, at the bottom of the regular ocean – most mm -hmm. people might not know this, but I know it's highly pressured, and a lot of people would think that it's completely dark at the bottom, bottom of the ocean, but it's actually luminescent, so there is light at the bottom of the ocean. That's so cool. Is it because of the, like, dinoflagellates, the bioluminescent dinoflagellates? Yeah, there's, like, fish that light up. There's plants down there that light up, so it's not completely dark. At the bottom, so if light, like if light's exposed, like the sun, I don't think it would affect them as much as we think it would. But like air I, and salt water might affect at some point. Yeah, I, I was watching a movie. I don't know if you've seen it. It's Megalodon. I have seen the ads for it. I haven't watched the actual movie though. But their concept was okay. They try to go down as deep as they could into the ocean. Mm -hmm. They they thought they hit the bottom of the ocean, but they hit like a little like a like a layer. And then they pushed through that layer. And there was kind of yeah, there was kind of another ocean underneath that layer. And then there were like huge giant squids and, you know, megalodons and all that. And when they tried to get out of it, they like popped a hole in that layer and that's how the megalodons got out oh and then they came into the normal ocean so what if that's Thanks. a real thing what if the megalodons are from the center from the hollow center what if the loch ness monster's down there <laughs> well there's giant snakes and other snakes. weird creatures just well there's Dargan. big giant blowfish that are just adorable looking and they're just giant. Huh? Yeah. Giant blowfish. Like that? Yeah. Well, bigger than that, but, <laughs> Not but like yeah. That. We, we, I think we it should be like that. We don't know, like, because we, the, the, the normal ocean, 80% of it we have not even seen, not explored at all. 
So we have no idea. You have that. We don't even know what's in there. And then there's something underneath that. <laughs> that we also don't know. <laughs> there's so much. We're trying to, we're using all these resources and stuff to get into space and stuff. We don't even know what's all in <laughs> Earth. Is your headphone jack not plugged in all the way? It keeps like going. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Sorry. <laughs> I explained it, it. I'm like, ah! It actually wasn't plugged in all the way. But like, yeah, we're, we're trying to get into space and trying to figure out space when we haven't. We got even, our own planet. Yeah, we haven't even figured out half of everything that's on our planet. Like, there's a uh, rainforest that nobody's even been in. Mm-hmm. There's ocean, plenty of it. I feel like there's also some amount of stuff that we should try to keep as untouched as possible, though, just because it is within the human tendency to ruin things. But I want to touch so, everything. So, you know, kind of letting some sleeping dogs lie, you know? Yeah, because um, if we do touch the wrong thing, then we, who knows it's, what would happen. <laughs> we're going to get turned inside out. Yeah, we let Megalodon We're not going to get the good side of the earth. We're going to be stuck. Yeah, we let Megalodons loose and no one can go in the ocean yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants the Megalodon. I mean, yeah. Or the cool, Kraken. But... They're going to unleash the Kraken. No Cthulhu. No. Not today, Cthulhu. No. But yeah, there's so much that is unexplored and then there's more under what's unexplored that's unexplored. I know. It's, it's just... layers upon layers upon layers of mystery. And then under that is a is a second earth with another sun and giant Germans. <laughs> and giant Germans. Well, and leprechauns. So, okay. Let's go back to the beginning. So underneath that second ocean, there is a second planet <laughs> of earth. So do they have an ocean also? That would mean no. there's three layers of ocean. What if that second what if that second ocean is the first ocean of the inner layer? And our oceans are the second ocean. That's just like if we go to a different planet and there's other creatures there. We're the aliens and they're not the aliens. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you gotta think from that perspective. That is true. It may be our second ocean, but it's their first one. And we need to respect that. We need to respect the inner earth people's first ocean and stop calling it the second ocean. Just so you know, this video is going to be a beautiful hodgepodge mishmash of my face going (laughs) every time your headphones do that. Yeah, these headphones are crap. I need new headphones. Yeah, you do. I'll, I'll work on that for the next time. <laughs> or I'll just not put them in. That might work it also. This hurts us. It hurts us. I just wanted to be cool like you and wear headphones. Then get these. These are like 20 bucks, dude. I have a pair. I just didn't find them in time. Don't judge me. No judging you. Uh-huh. Sounds like you're judging me. Your face says you're judging me. You got a judgy face. I always have a judgy face. Mm-hmm. All right, so now we're going to jump into our fact of the day. Fact of the day. You want to go first? Yeah, so I just went. today I learned, and of course it's topical, darling. Today I learned that alkaline hydrolysis might actually neutralize prions as well. And I know I kind of mentioned that during my spiel on alkaline hydrolysis, but I've been kind of going over all this information pretty recently and learning more about it. And so I was doing some studying to learn a bit more about what it means by like neutralizing and and whatever. And I found that it does actually denature the protein in viruses. And I, I might be wrong, so please don't attack me. I know that there was some ribonucleic acid stuff going down and some stuff being and that's the most scientific way I can explain it but basically that's how it was able to make it so that the virus was completely inactive after being put through alkaline hydrolysis and they found some pretty promising results with the prions and prions are notoriously difficult to to kill or neutralize or get rid of 
So the fact that alkaline hydrolysis shows that it might be able to do that is pretty cool. Pretty cool if I say so myself. So that's what I learned today. Today I learned. That's what you learned? <laughs> that was a lot. It's my, good to learn things, but, no matter how big or how small, okay, AJ? Don't be shaming me for my learning. I know, but my fact isn't as smart as that one. <laughs> that was my point. You came with a hitter, and I came with something small. I'm excited so, to hear your facts. I'm gonna give you Go. more than I'm gonna give you more than one since my facts aren't as smart as your facts. My first fact is: Did you know that snails have fourteen thousand teeth, and some can even kill you? I knew about the one that can kill you because, if I remember correctly, in Hawaii, stepping on their slime was bad for your skin. Um. The 14,000 teeth, I'm, I'm recovering from that one. That's, <laughs> that's upsetting. That is Creepy upsetting to know. Where are all those teeth? <laughs> and you see them eating these, and they're just so... It looks so delicate and, and cute. Like, tip, tip, tip. So to think of this, there's for like 14,000 teeth. Like, <laughs> wouldn't that make, make them... them seem more alien. Wouldn't that make them mostly teeth? Um, that's just. I'm gonna have nightmares about snail teeth. <laughs> you have snail nightmares. Snail nightmares. I didn't need that. Something less scary. Uh, did you know Mr. Potato Head was the first toy to ever be advertised on TV? I didn't know Mr. Potato Head was that old. I'm sorry, what? I didn't know Mr. Potato Head was that old. I wonder how creepy the original versions of Mr. Potato Head looked. Also, was Mr. Potato Head before Toy Story or was Toy Story before Mr. Potato Head? I think Mr. Potato Head was way before Toy Story. Does that make me seem super young for asking that question? I, if, it, if it was the first toy ever advertised on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Hold up, that was a dumb moment on my part. <laughs> cool, cool. I'm a dumbass. That would make Toy Story the first movie my, ever created. There's my, there's my crowd of dumbassery. Yeah, I want to, um, I'm going to probably throw the image up on the screen, but I want to see the first ever Mr. Potato Head and how he looked to see if he looked creepy. I don't know, man. Like, oh, you always see, no. No. You always see old versions of, like, toys and stuff like that and the original Mickey Mouse characters and stuff. And you're just like, oh, yeah, times have been good to you. You glue up. That's for sure. You glue up. You glowed up. I would have never, ever in life bought this toy. <laughs> no, it's an, oh, my God. Is it terrifying? Can you, uh, hold on, let me turn down my brightness on my screen. I can also just look it up myself or you can send it to me on my phone and I can make up that faces. I guess. God, Rebecca. Sorry. You make my life so difficult sometimes. Just Yo, you need to get that headphone situation. I will, lady. Like every other word of yours is... Every other word. There it is. There's the creepiest thing I've ever seen. And I will put it on the screen later. Did you get it? What the fuck? Exactly. <laughs> what is that? Holy shit. First of all, 1952. 1952. Way before Toy Story. <laughs> As it turns out, that is before Toy Story. I will concede that. That is all right. I mean, hey, I guess if you can make a toy where all your children need is a potato they use and an parents actual... who don't care about their kid choking. They use an actual potato. They used an actual potato. And I saw it, that. It had a body. Like, the, the new Mr. Potato doesn't have a body. 
Yeah, that was that was the thing too that I was kind of confused about. I'm like, what's the point of sticking a giant ass potato on that tiny little body? Like, put to look creepy. things into the potato. They, yeah, they want it to look as creepy as possible. Well, I could see that. I could see that. Now I'm kind of curious on the first versions of every toy. First version. First version nightmares. Yeah, that is a nightmare though. Mr. Potato Head can stay in the past. Mm-hmm. I'll take the Toy Story version of Mr. Potato Head any day now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that version was also before Toy Story. <laughs> probably, probably, but he's the one that we're familiar with, okay? Okay, you got another fact? Hit me, come on. All right, um, a duel, like a fighting duel, between three people is actually called a truel. Truel? A truel. Truel. Really? Yeah. Huh. I never even heard of the word truel. But that's a duel between three. How do three people have a duel? You hope that you aim at the same person as the other guy at the same time? So that way... Isn't that, isn't that also called a Mexican standoff? Or is that four people? I don't know. I didn't know if there was a numerical minimum for a Mexican standoff. There might not be. I don't even know. I'm pretty sure it has to be more than two, though. Yes. Because then that's just a duel. <laughs> or a troll. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Four or more. Dual troll Mexican standoff. <laughs> they just said forget the Official numbers. Official count. Yeah. I have one more weird fact. You ready? And go. People can suffer from a psychological disorder called bonthropy or boanthropy that makes them believe they are a cow and they try to live their life as a cow. So do they try and have people milk them? <laughs> Not even where I went with that. Because, <laughs> like, first of all, I... did that hit you hard? I'm thinking about it. So, like, first of all, how does this develop? And secondly, do they act like real cows or do they act like they would think a cow would act because it sounds like if it's a psychological disorder and so like the asking them if they get people to milk them cows i don't think just are like i need to be milked hey human milk me I, I i'm pretty sure like cows with like lactation and all that they only produce milk at certain times so don't, don't cows udders get full at some point to well, where they they're need lactating. to be milked? Yeah, yeah, if they're lactating and they're producing milk, yeah. But if they're not, and I don't, again, I'm not a cow scientist by any means, so I don't know. But, like, if they're not lactating, they're not going to naturally need to be milked. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then also, does the cow, like, know? Does the cow know to walk up to some random dude and just, like, be like, yo, hey, please help me out. Help me out. I need to be milked, man. Because then... You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. how... I'm just... If this person had never met a cow and they got this disorder, how would they act? I don't know. Do cows act a certain distinct way that other animals don't act? That is the other thing. It's like, why is it specifically a cow? Is there is there, like, a whole category of disorders that have you thinking and living as a whole slew of animals and that one just happens to be cow related? I'm trying to think of like a distinct feature that would say this person is acting like a cow rather than this person is just acting like an animal. Like I don't know a distinct cow feature that would say hey you're acting like a cow. <laughs> I don't. I don't yeah. even want to say that to anybody. Like, hey, 
Stop it. You're acting like a cow. <laughs> You're acting like a cow. Moo. Um, I don't know a distinct. Yeah, what, is it just because they say moo sometimes? And then also, how how do you distinct that? Because a, a bull is technically just a male cow. So how do you know they're not acting like a bull instead of a cow? I'm lost. I don't know. And I'm thinking about corn dogs. <laughs> I'm just gonna say maybe they eat grass and they say moo, and they like I'm a cow. That's all I'm a cow. Think. I'm a cow. <laughs> they I'm just say it. Cat. They just say it in English. I'm a they cow. Just say it. I think they I'm just a cow. Gravitate towards cow patterns, clothing, yeah. and stuff like that. I, I can accept those. I can accept those terms. Yeah. That was our first episode of the podcast. I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, I hope you all learned something. You can catch our podcast wherever podcasts are found. Uh, on Mondays, the audio will go out. And on Wednesdays, you will get a video like this on YouTube. So subscribe to everything and check us out because we'll be here and she'll be creepy. And uh, we'll catch you guys later. Till next time. <laughs>